Hi, everyone. How are you? I'm Amanda with Simply Flames and Art, and I am here today to bring you a project that is a simple project. There are ceramic tile um, ornaments, and they are made from a ceramic tile that you get right from your uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, they come on a sheet that has like 15 of them for five dollars and something so they're a super cheap project that you can do for a gift for just a decoration for your tree for whatever you want to do and so i'm gonna i'm using the santa pack that has the two sheets and um that's what i'm using today for these and I've made several, but we're going to make these today. And what we're going to do first is um, I'm going to clean off my tile with a little bit of alcohol to make sure I don't have any residuals from oils from my fingers or anything like that. So I'm just going to give them a quick little clean. Um, just dry it off a little bit because I do want those tiles, even though I want them to be oil free, I do want them to also be dry. So make sure they're dry. And then today we're going to use the Let It Snow, the Noel, and if we have time, maybe the Reindeer. So we'll see. Um, but I want you to see it all. And I'm going to actually use two different products. I'm going to use the ceramic paints and I'm going to use the Love Bug, which is the new holiday chalk art. So I'm going to use both of these. And this is just the black um, ceramic paint. Even though I have the red ceramic paint, I wanted to see how the chalk art. So I have um, these are going to go on my table and I'll show you how I'm going to do that in just a minute too. And so, um, I want to use the same color and I have gotten something on that one, little residuals from the chalk art, I think. And so I'm just going to center it as best I can. You know, you can kind of see through when you can center the, um, the stencil in the center. And then just burnish it down with your finger or you can use the little i cut my spreader the little spreader i have two of them and i cut one down so i could have a little smaller one you can also use that and then i have found for me um a paintbrush works well for me but i'll also use this um and so just get a little bit on on your spreader you don't need a whole lot a little bit goes a long way actually i have found um and i want to thank a maker studio for letting me be part of the makerthon i have enjoyed watching all of the other crafters and artists do theirs today it has been so fun i'm a relatively new uh, maker boss um, i joined end of august first part of september i'd have to go look at the actual date to know but it was sometime in that time frame um, and I have enjoyed working on the projects that I have done. Um, and so I just want to thank them for including me and let me be part of this day. And I'm just going to get this on here. These are triple mesh cut stencils. Um, the chalk art is actually, uh, if you wanted to, and I don't want to, but if you wanted to, you could, you know, put them out now and then just wash the chalk art off and do something else at another date. I'm just going to set that aside and I'll pull this up. I actually got a little bit over into my wreath, but you know what? Because it's chalk art, I can just um, wipe that right off and clean that right up. Sometimes I find I have better control and that's just probably a me thing with the paintbrush. Um, and it may be just the fact that I am kind of new and, you know, I'm, I'm learning as I go. And, um, but see, I can just take a little wet paper towel and wipe that right off. And there we go. We have let it snow. Isn't that adorable? I'll show you how to fix them in just a minute um, to make the ornament. And so for the next one, I think I will hold off on doing some four minutes. I think I'm good. Um, Let's see. This one I'm going to do the Noel, and I'm going to do the Noel in black, I think. Because um, that's just so pretty. And so get that on there really good. Burnish it down. You can use your finger or you can use the little spreader. Now, for the ink, 
I am going to use my, or the ceramic paint, sorry, it's ceramic paint, it's not the ink. Um, I'm going to use my paintbrush because I find for that, I actually do have a lot more control with the paintbrush. And I'm just going to let a little bit come out and get on the end of my paintbrush. So it's just, it's just a little bit. And then I'm going to just go over the mesh part with that paintbrush. And I have found, I was having a little issue with the ceramic paint bleeding a little bit. And I saw Amy do a project where she used it with the paintbrush and I was like, that's brilliant. And so I was like, well, I'm gonna try that. And I have found that that actually works better for me. Now that I have said that, you know, how, how it is, as soon as you, as soon as you like brag about something, it, it, it ends up, it ends up proving you wrong. But anyway, we'll see. It's just the way it goes. But let's see. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think I got things well covered there. Let's see how I'm gonna set that aside. Let's see how that works. I'm gonna peel it up, and I'm gonna try to go. You know, not. Oh, that's not too bad. I have a little bit of a bleed right there in that one L, but that's that's not bad at all. And so, so there we go. There's the no L, isn't that pretty? And so the way you're gonna finish these, and then I can come back and um, maybe do the deer, or maybe I'll just do the deer really quick while those two are drying, and then I can finish them because I still have some time. So I think we're good. So. I got ink on it from my fingers. So watch that. Make sure I tend to get paint on my hands all the time. And so sometimes I end up um, transferring that onto my project from my fingers. And so that's just a caution just for your own. Um, give it a little wipe there from where I've been touching it. Get those oils off. Dry it. And then I'm going to do my deer in black also. Um, my table is very, um, I have, I don't know how you all do your tablescapes, but I love to do tablescapes. And so my table is, is all different. And I have little dessert plates that are all Christmas plates and they're all like sort of different. And then they go on top of my big plate. I'm going to show you in a minute. And so I have a plan for these ornaments to go on my napkins and then that's going to be my guests little take home and so um my guest probably this year is going to be my family given covid and all the stuff and you know people being nervous about going to other people's homes and so it's a little different this year but that's okay i understand um people being worried. So just going to get that on there. Um, and obviously if you're at home doing this on your own, you don't have to go as fast. So you can, you can be a little more careful in your, in your approach. I got a little bit there. I'm just going to take a little napkin and wipe that off before it dries. And with this ink, this is, um, well, this ceramic paint, I keep saying, calling it ink it is not ink. Um, and I don't know why I keep doing that. Um, but the ceramic paint, it is a no bake, um, for the ornaments. It really doesn't matter because you're not going to eat off of them. But if you were putting this on a plate or something that you eat on or has food, like a serving platter or something that is perfectly safe. So you don't even have to worry about baking it. You just let it dry for approximately eight hours or overnight. I would allow overnight. And then you, um, that's all you have to do. And you can see, I got a little line right there that I'm just gonna wipe off. And since this is the um, ceramic paint and it hasn't dried yet, I'm able to just wipe that right off, that little line I got there. And there you go. Is it, aren't they adorable? They're so cute. And so the way we're gonna finish these up is I have a little jute twine and I've already cut some. 
and I have my hot glue gun that's all ready to go. And all I'm going to do is just loop it like this. So you kind of loop it and you have your two ends. And then you take your tile. Hopefully they're dry enough. You'll want yours to dry because I don't want to mess them up. Make sure you've got the right end going the way you want it because you don't want to put your hook on the wrong end and put these both ends look the same when you turn them upside down. So just make sure you orient it when you go to do it. My glue gun wants to be like a really hard push for some reason here. Good Lord. Come on, glue gun. Give me some glue. There we go. Must be getting into the new stick there and it just didn't want to push it through. And then all I do is I take my two ends that I put together and just push it down. Let that cover it good. I just take my finger and make sure it's covered good. Don't burn yourself. I'm so used to glue that it, you know, unless it's really hot, it doesn't really burn me. And then there's your ornament. And if you wanted to add a cute little bow, you just get some ribbon. And I think I'll take, since this one says, let it snow, I think I'll take some um, of my of my snowflake ribbon. I got this ribbon at the dollar store. It comes in, you know, just a little, just a little thing in the dollar store. Um, and then you just make two loops like this. And this is a little tedious because it, it helps if the one loop that you're wrapping over is actually a little bigger than your other loop. And then you just, you know, you have to kind of like work it a little bit, but you just push it under there and you let that flip around because then when it flips around and you pull it out, you have all of your right sides going together. So you want it to, to actually make that little flip you saw. And then you just pull, I might not cut this quite long enough, but we're going to go with it. It's fine. Um, this ribbon could have been cut just a tad bit longer than what I did. But since we're alive and you know what, the show goes on, even if you cut your ribbon a little bit slow, a little bit shorter and we'll just make it match. There you go. Make it look, you know, kind of cute. You don't want it to look like it's all junkety. And we'll trim our ends. Give it the right little angle. And then we'll just hot glue it on. This glue gun wants to be so hard to push. I don't know. It's all of a sudden just being a little brat. Not pushing right. And then there you go. Isn't that adorable? I mean, you can give it like that. You could put a little something on the back. You could take the felt and put it on the back if you wanted to cover that up. But there's your ornament. You can hang it on your tree. You can put it on your table. You can, um, and for the black one, I have this really adorable, um, red and black buffalo check. As you can see, red and black are going to be sort of the theme this year for my table. I do different things for my table every year. Um, I kind of use the same little plates, but then I change up the napkins. I change up the what's holding the napkins. I change up the, you know, uh, stuff around the plates and stuff like the tablecloth and the napkins and the the decorations on the table um, to whatever my theme is or color scheme for that um, year. And so um, this year I happen to be really liking the Buffalo check. So that's going to be one of the things that is on my table. Last year it was the like a rose gold that I was like in the champagne gold that I was like in love with. And so that was it last year and everything was kind of like a little sparkly with that. 
um, this year it's a little more rustic looking. So, you know, my, my tastes change all over. And today I'm, I'm cutting short ribbons. So apparently today is a short ribbon day because this one's short too. But, you know, cute little bow like that. And then um, my glue gun. that is just not working with me today at all. This glue gun has like been the best glue gun until I go to use it today and it wants to not come out. I don't know, some days. And then I'm just gonna turn it over, get my little jute string, put them together, make sure they don't twist. See how that twists like that? If you put that, if you glue that on like that, it will twist like that when you hold it up. So make sure you you check it and make sure it doesn't do that because it will do that and then your ornament wants to twist. And I don't know about you, but that drives me insane when I put an ornament on a tree or somewhere and the ornament string wants to twist and turn my ornament the wrong direction. And so just, just double check that before you glue it down and then just hook it down. I just put it, my finger in there and just push it over just to make sure it's well hooked down with the glue. You could also take a little piece if you did your felt and put the felt over top of that or just come back with a little piece of ribbon and put over that to, to make sure you stabilize your hooks, your, your little hangers a little bit better. I didn't bother to do that step, but you could do that. And there they are. Aren't they adorable? And so they're the perfect little gift. And what I plan on doing with these is I have, I just bought down a plate. I didn't pull out my little, um, my plates, but here's going to be my um, tablescape. And so I've got my deer for my men and my family. And I have my red for my, the women in my family. And so I will set my table like this. And so I'll have the red plaid and then the buffalo black and white plaid. And then I'll set these. I'll have my plate that I'll have with my decorative plate sitting on top. And then I'll put my napkin and then one of these with my napkin.